Hey everyone, welcome back. Inspired by the people who live in the vibrant community where the Bronx Museum is located, South Bronx artist John Ahern and Rior Del Torres for four decades have been honoring Bronx sites through their renowned sculptures. Now, for the first time ever, a large group of these artworks are on display at the Bronx Museum in an exhibition titled Swagger and Tenderness. And joining us to share more, we welcome artists John Ahern and Rio Velto Torres and Swagger and Tenderness curators Amy Rosenblum Martin and Ron Cavanaugh. Hello and welcome. Hi. Hey. Congratulations yeah. on this successful exhibition. I am only sad that we haven't been able to get you on sooner, but I can only imagine every, you're in demand, you're in demand. <laughs> Congratulations. What a big, big, big accomplishment. Yeah. All right. You. So um, I, I'd like to start with you first, Amy, sure. just because I know you organized the uh, initial arrangements for this exhibition. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what, I guess, how, how much time it took to even put it together. It took about a year, which is pretty quick. That is quick. Yeah. That is quick. We were working fast, Ron and I. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. So, you know, I know that you've curated um, in various museums. So mm -hmm. I just give everybody a little history about uh, these particular artists and the also the venue of choice and also the messaging that we're sending out to our community. Well, the Bronx Museum of the Arts... I used to work there full time as a curator. I love the Bronx Museum of the Arts. Um, I love that it sort of um, shows good art. And then if you pay attention, the good art happens to be coming from uh, people of color. But it's not like stamping that in the front. It's just like good art. I love the Bronx Museum. Um, and then Ron and I met there. We were both working full time in the early 2000s. Um, and of course, we had to show the art of John Ahern and Rigoberto Torres, sort of a no brainer. They're world famous. They represent the South Bronx all over the world. I know. And so to bring their art back to the Bronx was necessary. And so that is a wonderful segue into familiarizing ourselves with Ron Cavanaugh, who is no stranger to our show. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I didn't introduce you as is the executive director of Literary Freedom Project. And uh, so I'm curious to know about this collaboration mm -hmm. and how you got so involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, as Amy said, we used to work together in the early 2000s. Back then, I was just doing communications, uh, but Amy knew I had to sort of side life as um, a literary activist here in the Bronx. So she invited me to come on the project after she sort of had the idea, but she also knew that it needed like a Bronx voice. Uh, so that's why she invited me on. Um, I knew of their work, but I wasn't intimate with their work. And this process has just been um, so eye-opening. You know, some of the first art I have ever seen was of their work, you know, so it's, it's like 360. Uh, sort of experience. Yeah, it's, it, it sounds like everybody's starstruck. And meanwhile, you, yeah. know, you worked with, you worked with each other in mounting this whole exhibition. John, I have to start with you. John, I know you for so many years. You know, um, I know of your work for so many years. I haven't been cast by you yet, but we can talk about <laughs> that later. <laughs> However, what has this particular exhibition meant to you? This really has... First of all, we've been focusing on Rigoberto's work and mine together as a pair, as a, as a uh, partnership between us. And the dialogue between my work and his is really the core issue in the show. And I, I think that, uh, that to see Rigoberto's work be focused and showcased the way it is in this show, is, is it does a world of good for me because it, because I care so much about him and I see how, how good he looks in the show. So I really appreciate both Amy and Ron, the way they focused on Rigoberto's work. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful and, and humbling, right? Because he's saying there's a conversation going on between you two yes. in, in, in the experience. So let's talk about your take on it, Rigoberto. Well, my take is uh, wonderful because uh, for me to see 
all these pieces together is, uh, and I live in the Bronx, so it's like seeing the whole family all over again. So it's great, you know, for me. Yeah. And let's talk about the subjects, right? Yeah, because yeah. you both choose different subjects, but yeah, mm -hmm. you're saying they have conversations, right? It's the subjects of our community and it's done in a certain flavor and, um, and you can actually identify both your styles. So let, let's talk about that aspect of it with regards to your work anyway. The style you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my style is, uh, I like the idea of adding a lot of paint on it, try to do a skin tone as close as I could get, makeup and everything, I like to throw that in. Yeah. Lately, I've been doing uh, other stuff like fabric, uh, putting a dress on, that kind of stuff, yeah. But different, different things to invent and make up, you know. And so how much time does it take you to it's, make one? It all depends on the size of the piece. If it's a small piece, about, uh, you could say five days, but for the person about 20 minutes. Uh, for you will be like uh, 25 minutes. And then the rest is uh, somebody else will make the mold and fix it, make up the hair, put the eyebrows, the lipstick, you know, that kind of stuff. That takes a lot of, about two weeks to do that. But we, we also have other work to do, so it takes longer, you know. So I guess you're the one that's going to be casting me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, right now we're looking at images of the process. And, and I, I just wonder, as an artist, like what that process is for you from, you know, putting the actual mold together, like putting your hands in it, placing it on the individuals and, and, and of course, sculpting it on the individuals. Would you like to answer that, John? Sure. If, it, if you think back at, towards the end of the 70s, one of the favorite means of documenting things was with a Polaroid camera. So everybody was taking Polaroids of each other. So when, we, when I started doing the face casting of people, I was making a like inner uh, humor in my head about this instant sculpture of faces that we were getting by throwing some material on someone's face and pulling the mold off and, and you're getting an instant copy of someone's face. So it was meant to be somewhere between like Coney Island and, and it's meant to be a little bit like I have a religious feature to it, but it was meant to be a record of people as they were that second on the street. And so we wanted it like an instant image. Does that make sense? It totally makes yes. sense. And it we were doing it publicly so that always with a crowd of people around us, we throw it on, pull it off, and there you get the sculpture done like that. And so I, I like to compare it to a Polaroid. How interesting. Yeah. What an interesting interpretation of, of, of just that process for yourself as an artist, right? And then for us. I mean, obviously for us. Cheap and easy. Cheap and easy? That's how I like it. You see what I mean? We're not trying to make, uh, these are not like complicated, difficult, fine arts where we're trying to make it so realistic and everything. It was more like you just throw it out you pull it back and then you got it just but like that. You have to make it easy for the person, not for you. The person, what is lying down, that is what you got to think about. Making sure that that person is comfortable enough to be able to do this cast. Right, because some are full body, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, so you mean to tell me like the young ladies who are, are doing the double dutch, that's a full body cast? Yes. That's a full body yes. cast. Yes. Same thing. Same thing. And the one with the machete? Same thing in a way. Same thing in a way. <laughs> machete, machete was separate. You know? this, the machete was separate. So, so the, let's yeah. go back to the double dutch. Okay, okay. let's go back let, to the yeah, double come dutch. Come on, there's a good place to, to think about. Okay. It. When we have the double dutch, imagine we first have the girls jumping rope, which they are, and we have pictures of them, and we have an idea about what each girl might look like. So we have a big table out, right? And on the table, in the morning, that girl lies down flat on the table in the pose that she would look like on the wall, very close to that pose. And you just throw the material on her just like that, boom, you get it just like a Polaroid of that top half of her. Then in the afternoon, we have her legs arranged in the way that she might like to be seen on the wall, okay? Then you put the top and the bottom together. I'm trying to emphasize how dumb and easy this is. <laughs> See, Robert and I are partners. We say the opposite, okay? He says it's easy for them. I say it's easy for us, right. okay? Because we're just doing these simple sculptures, okay? And you put it, and because it's on a table, it's already made to be 
flat like a wall. You get it? Got the table it. is the wall. Got it. And then you take that table and you put it up on the wall, the, 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 that form, and the piece is made already. You know? Oh, my God. You don't have to do a thing. So I have a question. Are you going to be doing any demos throughout the exhibition? Any what? Demonstrations. Demonstrations. Well, we're always doing demonstrations, but I don't know how public it is. You see? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. He's such a poet, John. I, I would like, I would like mystic, to see yes. it. Yes. You, you would like to? I would like to see it. You would, would like, like to, to see, see it, it yeah, yeah, happen yeah. in person. Look, I just gave an idea. I don't, Amy's like, mm, I don't know. We weren't talking well, about like that. Say, we're Rhino. talking about it. Rhino. We have to do Rhino in Rhino. public. That's, public. What yeah, that's what we need. For your show, we'll do you publicly well, the sculpture of you for the show. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. That actually sounds like a really good idea. It, I'm good with that. It must, yes. okay. it must be a follow up. It must be a follow up? Yes. We also right. did a double Dutch party. So uh, we bring it to life in different ways. Right. So I like that. So I like that. I like that. So let's talk about the events that are coming up and let's talk about how long people can actually experience this wonderful exhibition that we're talking about that I've now been thrown into the mix. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> the show is up until uh, the end of April, April 30th. And uh, the upcoming event that we know of so far is April 1st. There is a converse, a public conversation with Rigoberto, John, and Abigail DeVille, who is an amazing artist who has superstar. a so superstar artist <laughs> who has her own solo exhibition up at the Bronx Museum at the same time as their show. And the moderator yes. is Shalene Rodriguez, who is immortalized in their sculpture with the machete. That's the one with the machete. Yeah. That's the that she stands machete. out, actually. Yeah, she yeah it's a standout uh, demo. I, that I'm machete sorry, is for real. I, I'm sure it's a, That's it's not a, real a machete? sculpture of machete. That is a machete. That, really? Yes. Oh, my. So, uh, Ron, before we go, because yeah. they're wrapping us up, what are the hours that people do? People need to make reservations to go to the Bronx Museum or we not? We do not need reservations. Admission is always free to the Bronx Museum. The hours, I think, are... One to six. Wednesday uh, through Sunday. Wednesday through Sunday. Yeah. yeah. All right. And do you have any last words, artists? I mean, it has been our absolute privilege and, and honor to have you here on set. And I'm so excited about this wonderful <laughs> concept. That I, I, I think he already said it. we're going to do a follow up. I'm like, uh oh. Right here in the studio. <laughs> here in the, I don't know if we can do it in the studio, but we can you're going to have your breathing straws. Yeah, breathing. yeah, I saw that. that. I saw that, that in one of the videos. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you have any last words before we go? Do you go? Uh, just bring double shirt. Bring a double shirt. Oh, he's talking to me. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a done deal. Yeah, he's got this casting is going yeah, on in yeah. this. Uh, apparently. Yeah, yeah. And you, John, yeah. any last words? Oh, no. I just, I'm very happy to talk to you. <laughs> it's very nice. Yes. Okay. Yes. I can't say it enough. What yeah. an honor yeah. and what Thank a privilege. You. And thank you so much for you. bringing welcome. it here to our viewers. You guys, you still have time to see it. Once again, thank you, John Ahern, Rigoberto Torres. Swagger and Tenderness is the exhibition we're talking about. We've got curators Amy Rosenblum Martin and Ron Cavanaugh. And uh, again, the exhibition is still up. It's happening until April. And if you're interested in more information, for more information, you can visit bronxmuseum.org. We do have to take a quick break but when we return we're going to hear about the upcoming screening of Louise Dente's award-winning a jazz pioneers of the black is beautiful movement stay tuned